Hello, and welcome to These Are the Days of Our Podcast. I'm Lisa. And I'm Jen. And today we are talking about Pi in honor of Pi Day, which is March 14th, or the third month in the 14th day, because who doesn't love a great math holiday? Yeah! <laughs> your personal anecdote with pie and does anyone on the planet have one discuss jen this was a real noodle scratcher because i do identify as as one of the nerdy types and so i would have thought that i should have some sort of pie story in my life but alas i do not i am pieless alas you are struggling I have to say the only one I have is when Andrew wants to order pizza, he asks if I want to order some (laughs) 3.14. That's quite possibly one of the lamest jokes, but it is pie related, so it counts. So I'm going to just adopt (laughs) that as mine as well since I don't have one. We'll just order. And you know what? It can expand to all pies, not just pizza pie. So So versatile. That's just great. (laughs) Such a versatile I dad know. joke. We can all start using it more in I our support. lives. So, did you <laughs> ask me, Jen, what is Pi and what is Pi Day? I believe so. <laughs> as a math enthusiast such as yourself, or a frequent player of Math Blaster, the, the video game, like myself, we just love Pi. Specifically, Pi is... 3.14159265 and so on and so forth for infinity for infinity and beyond <laughs> it is represented by the lowercase greek letter and it is probably one of the most famous mathematical constants uh it is specifically the ratio of the circle's circumference to its diameter so the distance in a circle around the edge is a little more than three times the length across. So actually pretty simple if you think about it. It is actually an irrational number, which means that it has a decimal with no N and no repeating pattern, which is kind of crazy if you think about how humans look for patterns and everything and you can't find one in this mathematical idea that is so old and been around forever. It actually has been known for like 4,000 years. So that I'll start talking about the history of Pi. Before the history, I will say that we do celebrate Pi on March 14th, hence why we're doing this episode. And it is celebrated at the exact time of 1.59 p.m. It's actually only celebrated, I think, like that in the States because they do their date as month first, then day. So Europeans would actually celebrate it on July 22nd since Pi in its fractional form is 22 over 7. So July 22nd. But, you know, we'll go We'll go with March 14th. But we might also eat pie in July. Just Listen. because. Just because. You, yeah. Because we're such math enthusiasts that we need to celebrate pie all the time. Exactly. Multiple pie days. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Pie first appears around 4,000 years ago, which is pretty nuts. So in 1900 BC, which uh, stands before Christ, not before coronavirus, <laughs> the ancient Babylonians appear to know what pie is. So they made a big circle and then used rope to measure their circumference and diameter, which indicated that it was slightly bigger than three. Uh, and they found a Babylonian tablet that indicates pi as like 3.125, obviously in their own numeric system, which is pretty crazy. So that's 4,000 years ago. And then 
300 years beyond that, the ancient Egyptians calculated pi as 3.1605, according to this really famous rind papyrus that has been found. And on it, it shows that the pyramids of Giza were built according to the principles of pi. The pyramids of Giza actually show that the computation of its dimensions by pi only has a 0.1% error. That's amazing, especially considering how big the pyramids are, which I didn't realize until I was standing in front of them. And they are absolutely enormous. And the idea of calculating something with such precision to make yeah, with no calculator. They didn't even have an iPhone to use the calculator app. I just don't understand. I don't understand. I can't even use a calculator and get less than a 1% error. <laughs> I don't understand. So next up, it appears in the Old Testament in the book 1 Kings, verse 723. It says, Also, he made a molten sea of 10 cubits from brim to brim, Round and compass, and five cubics the height thereof, and a line of thirty cubics did compass it round about. And so that implies pi is three. And just as a fun Bible fact, because <laughs> math facts, Bible facts. We want them all. We want them all. Exactly. This is in reference to the building of the temple. Thank you for <laughs> those facts. I mean, we love facts, let's be honest. This is where it gets pretty nuts, I think, <laughs> in, in the history of Pi. So I was researching this, and there's a paper that was released by David Wilson called A History of Mathematics in 2000, and he's at Rutgers University in New Jersey, and he talks about gematria, which is the idea that every letter in the Hebrew language has a numerical value, and this was used in biblical times. And so I did call my friend David, who's Israeli and from Israel, speaks Hebrew. So I got him to confirm it so we know we can go with it. <laughs> and basically, I'm so I'm going to read what he wrote because this is pretty, I think, pretty nuts. So it says, debates have raged on for centuries about this verse. According to some of it is just a simple approximation. However, most mathematicians and scientists neglect a far more accurate approximation of pi that lies deep within the mathematical code of the Hebrew language. In Hebrew, each letter equals a certain number and a word's value is equal to the sum of its letters. So in the verse that I just read, the word line, so as in a line of 30 cubics, is written as kof vav hef. Good Hebrew pronunciation, I'm sure. <laughs> Thank you. I actually did google it <laughs> but the last word that i said hey which is h-e-h -E doesn't need to be there and is not actually pronounced so if you take the value of the words uh with this extra letter it's 111 if you take the value of it with Without it, it's 106. So basically to say the ratio of pi to 3 is very closely the ratio of 111 to 106. So if you're solving for pi, you get pi as 3.1415, which is exactly what pi is. And it's super accurate. And this is that it's crazy that in the Bible, again, before they had calculators, but after the Egyptians, you get this extremely accurate calculation of pi. And this is the best record we have of the greatest number of correct digits for like several hundred years up after that, which is... That's really amazing. It's also a concept I'd never heard of before. And so like to think there could be all this like secret codes, it's like the Da Vinci Code. Like what <sighs> other cool codes lie in the bible i immediately want us to gematria our names and figure out what we actually mean numerically Ooh, like so. maybe oh what if we mean pie oh my goodness <laughs> <gasps> layers uh, on layers and layers <laughs> I, i'm speechless because i'm so excited <laughs> oh other suggestion, maybe this is how we should pick lottery numbers. We should pick <gasps> our truest Ooh. geometric numbers. I'm sure that's the verb form <laughs> of yeah. geometria. Um, yes. Okay. Homework assignment. It's better than like actually learning Hebrew and translating ancient <laughs> Bible texts to find treasure. So, mm. you know. Yeah. 
Yeah. So then back to actual pi facts or the history of pi. Um, we probably have our most famous pi calculator after that, which is Archimedes. He's a pretty famous Greek guy, lived in Sicily, and he did the Pythagorean theorem. Our favorite theorem. It's the best one. Um, but he calculated pi using polygons and like just making pol- mass amounts of polygons and proved with an algorithm that it pi is 22 over 7. So like basically he's the smartest and the most important pi finder. That That's my summary of Archimedes. I would like to add to your summary of Archimedes because I I was reading that he was so into pie that he didn't even notice when the Roman soldiers invaded the city that he was in. And so as the soldiers approach him, he yells, don't touch my circles. And the Roman soldiers were not into pie at all. And they just cut off his head and continued on their day i think that being maybe too obsessed with pie might be detrimental to your health because you might not notice when your city is being invaded yeah if you're really into finding the diameter of a circle or the what the length of a right angle triangle is you could be (laughs) beheaded so don't get too into that it's the new drugs slippery slope here slippery slope down that hypotenuse (laughs) math jokes (laughs) math jokes okay so from archimedes time to like the renaissance early 1600s around the world people were discovering pi um without knowing other people were doing it so a mathematician in china calculated pi to nine decimal places in 1593 we have a mr romanus calculated use the polygon method to calculate up to 17 digits but only the first 15 were accurate sorry in 1596 a german man lud of von something got <laughs> presented 20 digits because he calculated with polygons that had over 500 million sides which is I mean, so he had to draw those out by hand. That's amazing. An algorithm. It's well, it's it's still really impressive because it's again no calculator. Yeah, and that kind of links to the idea that some mathematicians refer to a circle as having infinite corners instead of being viewed as cornerless. Because that's the idea that if you break it down into small enough sections, then you can calculate the diameter. But without those corners, you can't. So this whole like breaking it down into a bazillion pieces is actually how they calculated pi before computers did it for us. And he loved pi so much that he put it, they put it on his gravestone. So he found 35 digits after the decimal. That's pretty good. Up until the Renaissance, uh, we didn't actually have a universal symbol. And so a mathematician named William Jones, friend of Sir Isaac Newton, made it the Greek little cute letter we know. um, Because it's the first letter of the Greek, Greek word that roughly translates to perimeter. And that was actually popularized not by him, by by a Swiss mathematician, Luhard Uhle. Um, Then a couple hundred years later, someone, some guys decide that it's irrational and transcendental. Sounds pretty cool. Mm. I have to say so myself. Do you think that it has anything to do with transcendental music then? What's the link? No. 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 (laughs) I don't? I mean, maybe. Why would I say no? It's possible. (laughs) Maybe all of that is math. Maybe everything is math. If you look close enough, everything is math. I mean, probably, though. (laughs) (laughs) So then into the 20th century, again, you get a lot more famous people calculated it like, oh, and then there's one mathematician and he calculated it up to a million and then another guy into a two million. And then in 1989, obviously using computers, these uh, brothers broke the one billion barrier. So clearly we're we're pretty advanced. Also clearly math nerdiness ran in the family there. Yeah. So with modern uh, technology, pi has now been calculated to 31 trillion digits, 
But I will say that the first 39 digits are all that you need to perform any calculations in our observable universe with n- virtually no error. So unnecessary. So a really perfect example of just because you can doesn't mean you should. Just because you can include 31 trillion digits doesn't mean you should. Just because you can make your own tattoos at home doesn't mean you should. Who's making their tattoos at home? <laughs> Other examples. I'm concerned for them. Yeah, I'm, I'm just definitely saying. concerned. <laughs> I don't think that you should. Definitely. <laughs> So not only has Pi fascinated mathematicians for centuries, it has also snuck into our cultural lexicon, and it's been featured in shows and movies and music. As you know, everything in pop culture starts and ends with The Simpsons, and they certainly do not disappoint on the Pi front, because The Simpsons is actually a surprisingly mathematical show, and there's been several mathematicians on the writing staff. I would say that the best cameo appearance of Pi in an episode is from Bye Bye Nerdy, which was in 2001. In this episode, Lisa is waiting to give a presentation at a big science thing, and Professor Fink is trying to unsuccessfully call the audience to order. Very frustrated, he calls out, Scientists! Scientists, please! I'm looking for some order! Pi is exactly three. At this, <gasps> the room falls into a stunned silence. And Professor Fink had correctly guessed that claiming to have an exact value for pi would shock this room of nerds into silence. This is shocking. Shocking. Rounding pi. Who, who could have thought? <laughs> Uh, So this plot line was the idea of a Harvard mathematics graduate named Al Jean, who had got this idea from an incident that took place in 1897. So what's called the Indiana Pie Bill was the brainchild of Edwin J. Goodwin, who was a physician from solitude. And he, seemingly oblivious to the fact that the last 4,000 years people have been trying to estimate the value of pie, decided that he was just going to decide what pi was and say that we should simply say it's 3.2 and legislate that to be included in the curriculum for Indiana schools. Possibly because politicians did not care about the baffling technicalities of mathematical legislation, the bill originally passed without any objections and was sent to the state senate to get ratified. At this point, a professor, Waldo, which is great, his name's Waldo, (laughs) from (laughs) Purdue University, alerted politicians that this was actually absurd, that Senate could no sooner legislate water to run uphill than to make law a mathematical truth. There's also pie in poetry. Oh, beautiful. Serenade me. Oh, you just wait, Lisa. You just wait. You're going to swoon in pie rapture. <laughs> Why wasn't this on February 14th? <laughs> <sighs> Hard to say. The first appearance of pie in poetry was in the 1500s when John Doan condemns the attempts to find the exact value of pi. And he thought that this was an abomination because it was an attempt to rationalize God. More recently, pi has popped up in other places. As you might guess, Star Trek, arguably the nerdiest series on TV, has an episode called Wolf in the Fold. And it Spock foils an evil computer by commanding it to compute the last digit of pi. And... Did you know that Pi makes an appearance at O.J. Simpson's trial? I I read this. That's nuts. Like the most famous trial, one of the most famous trials of the century, and Pi appears. I know. Who knew that you actually might use math again? Uh, even though you you swore to your parents when you were doing your math homework that I'm never going to use this again. The crux of the argument for the trial was between the defense attorney and the FBI agent. Pi was used to by the defense attorney to argue that there were flaws in the FBI agent's intellectual acumen because he couldn't correctly identify the value of Pi. He had said it was 
3.12, I believe, instead of 3.14. He will never live that down. <laughs> so embarrassing. Oh, the shame. How could you not know? Embarrassing. There's been a number of songs that have included pie. So one of them is by Kate Bush. And in the background of the song, she recites about 100 digits of pie. But... A lesser known, but probably my favorite Pie Bay song is one by the legendary rapper, Pie Diddy. <laughs> and it's not just about like strawberry rhubarb or apple. No, it's P.I. Diddy. Mm. So like, like P. Diddy, but more mathematical. More mathematical. So it is a song called Lose Yourself in the Digits. And <laughs> it is a parody of Eminem's hit, Lose Yourself. It's about the agony and the thrill of trying to recite the digits of pie. So I'm going to include a, a nice little musical snack here for you to enjoy because it's really fantastic. Basically, he talks about if you had one shot, just one shot to recite pie, what would you do? Please include that. Well, everyone <laughs> wants to know what the other digits are. We're going to try and get this on the charts. Um. <laughs> oh, straight to number one. Absolutely. Look, if you had one shot or one opportunity to recite the digits of the number pi, one moment, would you capture it? Or just let it slip. At the end of the song, he ends up rapping a whole bunch of uh, pi digits. So, fun time. Pi three four one four one five nine two six five three five eight nine seven nine three two three eight four six two six four two three eight three two seven nine five zero two eight eight four one nine seven one six nine three nine nine three seven five one zero five eight two zero nine seven four nine four four five nine. Yeah. So pi is actually quite useful not just in our cultural history but it is used today i will say um not just in rap songs but you know by nasa so quite important so nasa uses it regularly to calculate the trajectories of spacecraft and on their website i found that a pi transfer uses the gravity of saturn's largest moon titan to alter the orbit of the cassini spacecraft so it can gain different perspectives of saturn so pretty cool i mean that's very useful for pi it can be used to calculate the volume of cylinders and spheres which i feel like you probably know like how much stuff you want to put in there for example like how many how much beer a cake will hold that's that would be useful you need a little pie for that it is actually a stress test for computers. So if your computer can calculate your 31 tr trillion digits, you probably don't have a computer bug or your computer isn't slow. So that is also useful. Does that mean when we run some diagnostic tests on our computer, we might actually be using Pi in the background? Is that what that means? I mean, I like your question. <laughs> don't know the answer to it but i would like to think it's true it's possible pie is there that would be really cool if it was true but i have zero idea so my understanding of computers is still limited to the idea that there are tiny men with hats that tip their colored hats to um for the pixels so i don't think i'm the person to yeah. ask if it's actually pie in yeah, the background it's, i don't i don't know so i really hope it is if someone could tell <laughs> us the answer thumbs up top marks you get a pie you get a pie if you give us the answer yeah we would 100 percent give that person a pie really the main thing that we should do to celebrate pie day is with actual edible pie yeah. i thought before we get into discussing our feelings on pie the edible kind i would give you a few facts as well yeah give me the facts it's actually also the ancient egyptians who were the first to put things into pastry shells so possibly do they know everything i know about everything so they were building these mathematically advanced pyramids and just eating delicious pastry shells filled with delicious things the very first published recipe was one made out of rye dough that was filled with goat's cheese and honey the early european pies were all meat pies which i feel like is less good than honey-based pies yeah, I'd take a honey goat cheese pie over a meat pie. 
Definitely. So these appeared kind of around the 12th century. They're really easy to store and carry. So sailors would take them with them to have food on the ships. And fruit pies didn't appear until the late 16th century. And apparently it was Queen Lizzie the First who was served the very first cherry pie. I do have to say, though, there is a bit of a pie controversy or possibly pie traversy. Pie traversy. <laughs> You're going to let me get away with that one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so apparently uh, the definition of what counts as a pie varies between Europe and America. So in Europe, you have to have a top crust in order for it to be considered a pie. Whereas in America, the bottom crust is sufficient. So if you had a topless pie possibly a pumpkin pie, for example, it wouldn't technically be considered a pie by the Europeans because it doesn't have a top crust. They would call it a tart or a flan. A interesting international pie traversy. So the other thing that I was really curious about is if anyone has, from a scientific perspective, been able to definitively rank what the best pie is. And unfortunately, the internet had no good answer for me. It was very controversial. No list seemed similar. So I decided to do this for myself and I drew out a March Madness pair up where I started with 16 types of pies, had them all facing off and seeing who were the final contenders. And this wasn't too much of a surprise to me, but I had two finalists lemon meringue pie and apple pie interesting it's really hard for me to choose between the two of these because it's very contextual and mood specific i agree i agree apple pie is like very cozy and you want it to be a little bit warm with some a la mode whereas a lemon pie is so fresh and brisk and sharp and yeah what's your favorite pie i actually think it's strawberry rhubarb that's a, it's a good one. It is a good one. Oh, so good. I have to get my mom to make me a pie and then ship it across the Atlantic because I want it now. And it needs to have a top crust so that the Brit oh. will allow it into the country as a pie. Because if, if it arrives and she says it's a pie and they see it doesn't have a top. Customs alert. You know, that is, um. <laughs> Postal fraud. Yeah. That's a violation. You were. Oh, yeah. You can't write the wrong things on those agreed. customs forms. In big trouble. Okay. Cannot. So in addition to thinking about pies, eating pies, making pies, there are many ways we can celebrate pie. And so I've, I've created a list with a few suggestions. So the first is very simple. Put pie on your pie. When making up your pie of choice, do you just carve a pie symbol into it so you can celebrate the mathematical pie. Perfect. Since we're all about consumerist holidays here on this podcast, you can also buy some pie-related merch. There are tons of punny shirts that you can get about pie, but if you want some luxury consumerism for your pie day, you should try the Givenchy cologne called Pie. It smells like citrus, forest, and pretension. <laughs> it smells like you think you're smart, but you might not be. <laughs> Exactly. There is also some very loose evidence that digit memorization can improve your working memory and overall performance in math. So you might take this as an opportunity to join the enthusiastic throng of pie memorizers. If you do want to win the world record, you're going to have to steal it from Rajveer Mina, who's memorized 70,000 digits of pi, it took him nearly 10 hours to recite wearing a blindfold, which is like a very high level of dedication to knowing pi. I feel like if your memory is that good, <laughs> maybe you should use it for something more useful. Uh, Rajveer Mina is not going to like that comment when he listens no, to this comment. No, probably not. <laughs> But I just, I feel like my memory is so bad that if I had a memory like that, I'd be like, just try to, mem I don't know, memorize cards when in Vegas. Do illegal things. Yeah. My goal was to memorize the steps of the Rubik's Cube, which I only memorized the first two. I've <laughs> been very unsuccessful in my memorization tasks. If you do want to steal the title from Rajveer, thankfully there's an app for that. And if you go on the Google Play Store, you can find an app 
very creatively named Memorize Pi Digits. So I hope that's your new lockdown hobby to steal the crown from Rajveer. And another great suggestion is to get a little bit more creative and to write a pie poem. Everyone has heard of haikus, the famous 575 Japanese poems, but a paiku is a clever alternative using a 314 syllabic pattern. And also, obviously, you would have to have a mathematical theme. So in honor of Pi Day, I've prepared a few paikus for you. You wrote poems for me? Yeah. Oh my goodness. You're going to swoon so hard. <laughs> so hard. <laughs> the first one. Rational. Pie. Delicious food for the brain. <laughs> Good work. <laughs> and the second one. Elegant. Math. Irrationally perfect. <laughs> also yeah. great. Also great. <laughs> so I have two more suggestions because you really need to get into pie. Uh, the next one is comes from Karen, my sister, who suggests that you should run 3.14 miles or kilometers. And you get added points if you're able to draw the pie symbol with your root. So I think... Possibly because we're going to be eating so much pie, it might not be a bad idea to incorporate some running into our pie day plans. Yeah, but we have been in lockdown, so I think it's 3.14 kilometers, not miles. I think that's you more know? reasonable. Yeah. we need The last thing to end off your pie day, I think that you should really sit down for a math-themed movie. The one that I actually really want to see is called The Man Who Knew Infinity, which stars Dev Patel and Jeremy Irons. It's about an Indian mathematician, Srinivasa Rama Ujan, mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. is a very famous Indian mathematician. He goes to Cambridge to publish his findings and to explore infinity in pursuit of infinity. So it seems really quite good. Since we've talked a lot about NASA, I thought you might also watch Hidden Figures, which stars Octavia Spencer, because it's about real life female NASA mathematicians. And finally, if you just want an excuse to watch Mean Girls for the yeah, into thousandth that. time, you could justify it because Lindsay Lohan is actually a mathlete in the state championship. And in the very last scene of her state championship run, yeah. she realizes this epiphany that all we have to do is try to solve the problem you have in front of you. It's just so beautiful. Oh, Lindsay. I will add to the possible movies you could watch is Darren Aronofsky's movie, literally called Pi, about Pi, which is probably one of the strangest films I've ever seen in black and white. I intentionally left it off the list because it's a psychological thriller and the reviews were, this is a very weird movie. And I'm like, I'm just not going to watch it. I'm just opting out. It's not in your typical rom-com genre. So no. yeah, that's fair. Um, well, I have to say it's really weird, so I don't recommend it. But it is literally about pie, so you could watch it if necessary. Some famous birthdays on March 14th. Okay, get this. Pi Day. Famous mathematician. Who's born on March 14th? Albert Einstein. Can you believe it? That's amazing. What a nerdy doubleheader. Pi Day, Einstein. And... And another famous mathematician, Stephen Hawking, died on March 14th. What a day. An illustrious what a day. day. It really is transcendental. Possibly irrational. There's like no sense to it. Some other famous people born on March 14th. We have Emily Murphy, who is a Canadian suffragette, part of the famous five. So good job her, born March 14th. Uh, Quincy Jones, who's the famous uh, American record producer, has a record 80 Grammy nominations and has won 28 Grammys. Just casual. Just very casual. And Billy Crystal, 
who I love. Just great movies, I think. Perfect. So, some good birthdays. Definitely. So, I can't possibly imagine who's not going to want to celebrate Pi Day because of their love of math and their love of pastries. But if it's not your flavor, there are a few other things you can celebrate this week. Uh, so, March the 12th is actually International Fanny Pack Day. Um, so <laughs> I am an unapologetic fan of a fanny pack, but if you're in the UK, you will probably know that fanny is considered a slightly rude word and they refer to them as bum bags. So if you are to over enthusiastically talk about your fanny pack, you might get some curious looks. <laughs> <laughs> then the 12th is also Alfred Hitchcock Day. So again, you can get some master of suspense cinema into your life um, in honor of Alfred Hitchcock Day. March the 13th is one of my favorites. It is Jewel Day. So I think Ooh. you really need to put on your best sparkly jewels. Prance around your flat because we can't go anywhere or do anything. But just take this opportunity to bling, frost yourself. Wear all your, all your jewels. jewels. Wear them all. Exactly. And this week is also World Salt Appreciation Week, which I think I celebrate every single time I eat. The amount of salt that I eat is honestly a little bit worrying, but so good. It's also Spam Appreciation Week, so the canned meat. That's a solid I just pass. feel like I can't celebrate this holiday. I'm... I just can't do it. So going to skip that yeah, one. Skipping that just one. Just eat more pie instead. That's it. That's all of my pie facts and celebrations. Well, it's been a good one. Go Definitely. make me a pie. Lemon meringue. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Okay, bye, Lisa. Okay, bye. 3.14.